Bacopa maniri. This is the plant right here. It is used as a memory enhancer, a cognitive nootropic. Is it something you should be adding to your daily regimen? That is what we are gonna be talking about today. Hey everybody, my name is Rob Nelson. I am a biologist. We're here with Juliet, who is a stream expert. I've recently been doing deep dives on a whole bunch of nootropics. I've been looking also at plants and fungi that people have been using for ages and trying to figure out what does the current science say? Is it as good as everyone says it is? So the reason I'm doing this in this format right now is I have a more fun and jam-packed video with information on Stone Age Man, the main channel. But I like to do a little bit of a one-take, so to speak, a let the camera roll and I just talk through the plant from start to finish in a format like this here on Biophilia. Because I think there's a lot of nuance that comes to Bacopa and especially to all of these plants and fungi, and it's worth just talking it through. So treat this more like it's a lecture. I'm sitting here talking about all the things in the plant and you can take notes if you wish. Um, I can get to the nuance a little bit better. Now, what am I talking about? Bacopa maneri. It's a very interesting plant that grows in wetland areas. It's a plant that's originally from India, Southeast Asia, Australia, that part of the world. Often in the video, for instance, I said it's from India, which, which it is, but it's, it spreads out along the coastlines there, uh, anywhere where there's no hard freeze. Now, it has recently been introduced into the United States, and that's why I could find it here. So it goes everywhere from North Carolina, south through Florida, which is where I found it the first time, all the way out to Texas. Now, Bacopa is the genus that has several species, many species actually across the world. Uh, there's a couple of main species that are found in the United States. I used to work with them when I was an aquatic biologist in my early 20s, which I showed footage of in the film, but it was a great plant. You basically put it in these wet set, like ba basically like this much below the water surface and it would just spread quickly. Um, it's not really an underwater aquatic, more like a semi-aquatic, so it can get dry and, you know, the water can go up and down, but it needs a lot of moisture, is the point. Now, it has a long history of use in India in Ayurvedic medicine. Now, Ayurvedic medicine is traditional Indian medicine. Uh, it dates back probably to the 6th century AD, where it was found in many Sanskrit texts, the original texts that would kind of form the basis of Ayurvedic medicine. Now, Bacopa was always listed as something that helped with memory. And traditionally, apparently the way they used this is they would take Bacopa and then try to memorize long texts. So I find this really interesting because that is one of the things which I'm gonna to get to that the science says it's really helpful for. So when they do memory studies, it seems to help with this. So here you have something that the current science is pointing and validating the traditional use. So if you can imagine, there's lots of plants and fungi that people have used for hundreds of thousands of years, um, although that goes way back. People, people would basically use something and say, oh, can I feel any effect? Can I not? And then over time, you'd start to curate which ones were the most useful. It became a lot easier when people could write, like writing in Sanskrit, writing in English, Greek, Hebrew, <laughs> I say English, that was kind of a, a late term writing style. But that's where we get a lot of the first indications of some of these medicinal plants. <clears throat> and we're continually finding more, uh, and we're actually pulling from traditional sources as well. So there's a lot of Amazonian tribes that didn't have any writing, they would just pass it down from shaman to shaman. And we're hopefully trying not to lose some of those because there are many important plants uh, that have medicinal compounds. Now, just as for reference here, of the 150 most used pharmaceuticals in the world, 118 of those have their derivative in a plant or fungi. That's 79% of them. That's a lot. And so I think it's worthwhile noting that you can also use the plant. Now, oftentimes plants have lots of different chemicals in them. Well, they do. And Part of the power, I suppose, of synthesizing something as a pharmaceutical or in the pharmaceutical industry, isolating one particular active compound is that that gets rid of all of the potential other compounds that are in the plant that could be negative affecting. Of course, the other problem is there could be a synergistic effect with a lot of compounds together, which you're not actually getting. 
So what is Bacopa Maneri good for? Well, I just want to talk through a couple of the bullet points uh, from all of the studies. I have some notes here that I'm going to fill you in on and a whole bunch of studies, which I'm going to link to down below, which are summarizing the current research. Now, the really good thing about this is that in the past, very little research was done on natural products. And why is that? Well, probably because the way the pharmaceutical industry works is that you isolate a particular compound, you get a patent on it, and then you try to make some money off of it. And so they put a lot of money into the studies to see if it's effective or not effective. And uh, that's how they can pass it through the FDA, the Federal Drug Administration, and get approval. Now, most natural compounds you cannot patent, and so they don't have the ability to make any money on. So nobody did the studies. That is until now when it's starting to become more common for people to um, want to do more holistic medicine, more natural medicine. And of course, the government is going to want to tell you, is this good for you? Is this bad for you? If something is actually really toxic, that's not good. Um, Bacopa is one that has a long history of use. And so there's a whole handful of new studies. Now, I'm just going to say, first of all, they have done studies on, is it bad for you? So the way they do this generally is they give rats fairly high doses of these things, and then they see how long is it going to take for them to have ill effects. Well, after 90 days of quite a high dose of Bacopa, about 10 to 20 times what you would give a human, no observable effects. That's pretty good. Now, uh, uh, I can give you a quick summary of what the studies have shown it's good for. Now, I mentioned them in the video, and I'm going to go through in a little more detail here, but essentially, it's stress and anxiety. Uh, it's considered an adaptogen, by the way, so that means it's allowing your body to better deal with stress. Okay, and I can explain how that works in a second. Uh, memory, which is one of the main things it's good for, but not necessarily, from a cognitive enhancement standpoint, it's not allowing you to learn things quicker. It's more making sure you don't forget things so fast. Apparently, that's the way it works. It's pretty good in its antioxidant ability, and if you know anything about antioxidants, uh, antioxidants bring and they scoop up all the free radicals, which can cause damage to DNA and to other things, and you don't want that, so that's good. It's shown promise in cancer cells in petri dishes, although probably more research needs to be done on that. Uh, it has an antidepressant effect, apparently, and uh, it seems to be good for a lot of the symptoms that ADHD comes from. So it's treatment of ADHD symptoms. Now, both my wife and my son have ADHD, and what I've found for them is they often get stressed and anxious at a lot of things, and if Bacopa is administered, which does seem to help with those things, it helps those symptoms. Now, another thing with ADHD is it's a little bit of a short-term memory problem, so if I was to tell my son when he was younger, uh, go get your shoes on, brush your teeth, and get your books and put them in your backpack and come out here so we can wait for the bus. It would be impossible. It would be so, he would forget instantly from one to the next what he was supposed to do. I'm not sure if that's the exact thing that Bacopa is good for, but because Bacopa is helpful for memory and ADHD at times can be a problem with short-term memory, I think there's potential there. So I'm going to put that on your radar. Uh, I'm trying to go back and forth with one of the experts in Australia who's been studying this. He has shown it's good for ADHD symptoms. Um, I just can't get him up <clears throat> on the phone so that we can talk through it. But hopefully for the final video, he'll be in there. Okay. A couple of other things that are really interesting is that um, this review more or less is trying to figure out what is the action that's happening um, and what is the compound that's most useful. Now, we probably can say definitively that it's a whole group of compounds within Bacopa called bacocides. That's just not just one compound, it's a whole series of compounds. Um, and, in, and if you, you see that I have to look at my notes for a lot of this, you see every plant is somewhat different in the chemicals. Bacocides are particular groups of enzymes in Bacopa, which means that with a lot of these plants, they're unique. So I have to learn each one individually when I go from plant to plant. And then I'm just memorizing exactly what's happening, or I just take the notes. And so I'm just letting you know, it's really tricky. I haven't spent my whole life doing Bacopa research. And so uh, I'm just going to 
point out here that in the double-blind placebo studies, it has been helpful in a couple of things. In particular, uh, helping with dementia, uh, which my grandma has right now and maybe doesn't have too long left, so I'm very curious about that. Parkinson's disease and epilepsy. All of those show great promise. And then as far as what is the uh, mechanism of action here, I'm just going to read this off because it's difficult to just spit all this out. It's, it's, they're trying to figure it out. The potential mechanisms are antioxidant neuroprotection, and that's either through via redox or enzyme induction, uh, acetylcholine nesterase inhibition and or choline acetyltransferase activation. Those are enzymes. Uh, beta amyloid reduction, increased cerebral blood flow, and neurotransmitter modulation. Now, the neurotransmitters, which we know are important for modulating uh, the flow of ner neurons and, and from one neuron to the next, making sure signals get passed, that would be acetylcholine, 5-HT, and dopamine. Now, those are all very important neurotransmitters. And so, yeah, I, I think this is really interesting, and basically, this review study just goes through one study at a time and talks about what's happening. All fascinating stuff. It's not like you can look into a cell and squirt a little bacocide in there and be like, oh, here's what's happening. It's good for this or it's good for that. What you have to do is you have to get creative in a lot of these experiments. Like for instance, um, when they're looking at uh, neuroprotectin ability, uh, well, they take a bunch of rats and they fill their cage with smoke which smoke is generally pretty bad for uh, cognitive decline, and um, they've found this effect. And then they have to figure out, well, what are indicators of cognitive de decline? Well, it would be this enzyme or that enzyme or this chemical is produced, and that seems to show cognitive decline in other rats. So let's study this particular enzyme or molecule and see if when you add Bacopa minari in a double-blind placebo study, which rats seem to do better? <laughs> and that's how they come up with some of these interesting results. Now, I can't say all of them were done that way because that's just one example. And there's there's tons of study here. There's 30 or 40 studies just in um, lo looking at its neuroprotective effects. They look at learning and memory. By the way, learning and memory is really interesting with Bacopa because people often say it's m memory enhancing. And it, it is, but only in certain ways. So they did a, a couple of studies. For instance, they did a study with 46 different healthy adults for 12 weeks. And then they studied their ability to um, uh, uh, learning, memory, and uh, tried to figure out what was happening. And they found out that they could, they had better memory, but it didn't seem to be an improvement in their ability to learn, it was more that the rate of forgetting things decreased. There are a couple of warnings, in particular Bacopa minari significantly suppressed fertility in male mice. This is part of the conclusion and the warnings. Uh, that was also uh, the case with turmeric. It was reversible as soon as you stopped taking it, so, you know, be a little bit warned there. Also, uh, it's just nice to know that a couple of the things is that it seemed to be very helpful for ameliorating cognitive disorders and helping healthy adults uh, have better memory. So both good things, and it helped with neurotransmitter modulation, which would partly mean it's an adaptogen. So there you go. I hope that was helpful, and I hope that in this short period of time I could talk through it in a way that made sense. And if you didn't watch the original Stone Age Man video, just watch that now. It's way more fun. I went out and found it in the wild. This is just a little bit of a ramble to make sure I got through all the details and could give you a little bit more information. Again, links to these review papers down below. If you're really interested in it, you can go and read it, but I tried to review it as best as possible. Okay, thanks everyone for watching. See you in the next one.